Inside the life of the Qatar royal family. At the Qatar 2022 FIFA World Cup, all eyes were currently on the ball. Due in part to the efforts of the royal family, the House of Thani, the small Middle Eastern nation, was chosen to host the tournament in 2022. According to Bloomberg, it reportedly spent 300 billion US dollars on stadiums and infrastructure over the course of 12 years to get ready for its World Cup dream, the most expensive of its kind ever. So let's take a look inside the life of the Qatar royal family. Hello and welcome back to Best Royal Affairs. The Qatari royal family hasn't always been seen favorably. Just hours before the World Cup kicked off, it wanted to completely ban on the selling of alcohol in World Cup stadiums, according to the Daily Star. Human rights violations during the event's planning brought about a lot of scrutiny. The House of Thani, Qatar's governing royal family, led by Tamim bin Hamad al Thani, is descended from a long line of Banu Tamim tribal confederation members. Tamim bin Hamad al Thani is the current emir of Qatar, often known as the country's head of state. They are one of the wealthiest royal families on earth. This royal family has wealth beyond that of the average individual could ever fathom or even dream of, just like every other previous royal family. According to some sources, the Qatari royal family has an outstanding $335 billion in net worth, which is a huge sum in the financial world. It is hardly surprising that the Qatari royal family leads an opulent lifestyle and invests in luxury properties, super yachts, and sports franchises. Everybody wants a house, especially one in the center of London. When the previous emir of Qatar's wife, Sheikh Moza bint Nasser el Misned, reportedly paid $80 million for a Cornwall terrace, it appears that she had the same idea. A further $40 million was spent by her to purchase two to three Cornwall terrace. The opulent one Cornwall terrace has seven bedrooms, 11 reception rooms, nine bathrooms, rooms for beauty treatments, and a leisure complex with a gym and a heated indoor pool. It's 21,500 square foot in size. At the same time, the nearby two to three Cornwall terrace has 14,000 square feet and six bedrooms. According to media reports, the family hoped to transform the five-story grade I listed terraced houses into a 17-bedroom mega mansion valued at over $230 million. Not all is as it seems though, as the BBC reports the documents from the Pandora Papers probe show that the Qatari family avoided paying $18.5 million in stamp duty by buying the homes through offshore companies. The family also bought the home at two to three Cornwall Terrace. The Middle Eastern country of Qatar is a small one. Its capital Doha, which covers 4,471 square miles, was formerly a fishing village and a well-known breeding ground for horses and camels. Additionally, it was a well-liked stopping point for merchants shipping products from China and India. After the First World War, it remained a British protectorate up before finally becoming independent in 1971. The nation is entirely encircled by water, with the exception of a brief land border with Saudi Arabia. Only for around 5% of the area is used for agriculture because it's primarily flat, desolate, and arid. The Al Thani dynasty settled in Qatar in 1700s. The Boni Qasim, Boni Ahmed, Boni Yaba, and Boni Toma factions are the four primary divisions within the family. There have been four significant changes in leadership, all of which involved in resignations. Tamim bin Hamad al Thani, who succeeded his father Hama, is the current emir. Many members of the royal family successfully overthrew King Khalifa al Thani in 1995. Hamad bin Khalifa al Thani, his son, ascended to the throne. A failed coup attempt occurred a few months later. Many Qatari citizens have had the nationality revoked by the government of Qatar over the years. People can get into trouble for criticizing the royals and other governmental organizations. People have protested against the government in large numbers because of its discriminatory actions. Tamim received his education in the UK. He graduated from the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst in 1998, just like his father. After arriving back into Qatar, he was appointed an officer in his country's military forces. Tamim was chosen to succeed his older brother Yassim, who was renounced the post as Crown Prince in 2003. He made a substantial contribution to Qatar's economic growth. He established the Qatar Investment Authority, or QIA, in 2005 and invested over $100 billion into it. Here is a list of the current holdings of the QIA. First up is Harris, which some consider as being the most opulent department store in the UK. 
Because of its opulence, this shop has served as a royal warrant holder for Queen Elizabeth II, the Prince of Wales, the Duke of Edinburgh, and Queen Elizabeth and the Queen Mother. There is even a dress rule. If you are wearing bicycle shorts, flip-flops, swimwear, beach shorts, or unclean clothing, you will not be admitted. The Paris department store Print Temps has also been purchased by QIA. Do you want to become good friends with a king? Well, I can make that happen, but only if you subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Just kidding, I can't do that. This shop has a rich history. It first opened its doors in 1865. It is also among the top department stores in the world for fashion and high-end goods. In addition to buying department stores, they also bought Porsche and French football team Paris Saint-Germain FC. Miramax Films invested $100 million in a churning group that included unpopular investments such as a 1% share in Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, a 6% stake in Credit Suisse, a 12.6% stake in Barclays, and several more. Actually, Qatar is the largest landowner in London. Let's take a few of the look of the stunning homes that they possess in London. The Shard, the tallest building in the UK, is among their properties. An icon of contemporary London, this magnificent building is dubbed a vertical city where people can live, work, and unwind. Inside are offices of the highest caliber. The five-star Shangri-La Hotel, which has residences and restaurants that have won awards. Additionally, it has the UK's highest viewing gallery, from which you can take in the breathtaking views of London. The intercontinental London Park Lane Hotel is also owned by Qatar. The fact that the hotel is situated on the same plot of land as the Queen's former childhood home at 145 Piccadilly, which was destroyed during the war, is one of the location's most intriguing facts. Sir Frederick Gibbard started building the hotel between 1968 and 1975. The Qataris have acquired something of such historical importance to the British people. The Qataris also own the Olympic Village in London. They paid £557 million for it in 2011. Currently, there are roughly 3,000 homes in a residential neighborhood. In addition to their properties in London, they also own some in France, such as a magnificent hotel, which enjoys a prime location overlooking the Mediterranean Sea, a private beach, and a number of opulent rooms with stunning views. Many diplomatic and sporting events were held in Qatar while the father of the current emir was in power. He may have been said to have laid the foundation for his son to build on, as he was also instrumental in the development of the news organization Al Jazeera. Since assuming power, Amir Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani has attempted to rise Qatar's standing abroad. He does this, among other things, by hosting sporting events. He helped organize the 15th Asian Games in Doha by founding the Oryx Qatar Sports Investments. He was chosen by Egypt's Al Aram as the best sports personality in the Arab world. Many people wonder how he found the time to concentrate on his studies whilst he was also participating in several military training exercises and taking trips to France, Monaco, Algeria, and the United Kingdom. One professor claims that he was with his handlers when he handed him his final paper. They also included a Rolex watch in the package, which he later returned. A person's status can be inferred, in part, from the vehicle that they drive. Being a member of the Qatari family royal makes you naturally want the best. One of the best-known cars in the world is the Chiron, produced by the French and German automaker Bugatti. The supercar's high cost and exclusivity, however, prevent it from being widely owned. On one occasion, a member of Qatar's royal family is seen operating the Bugatti Chiron. This is not your standard Bugatti Chiron, though. Only 40 Devos were made by Bugatti, with prices starting at $5.08 million and rising sharply as customers selected various options and made customization requests. However, this is not the only Bugatti Devo owned by a Qatari royal family member. Sheikh Khalifa bin Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani was seen earlier this year driving a Devo around London. Along with his Ferrari Monza SP2 and Lamborghini Sian FKP37, he shipped the hypercar to the UK. Without a doubt, the royal family is also a master of the sky. It established the exclusive airline Qatar Amiri flight in 1977, which only transports members of the nation's royal family and senior government officials. The airline presently possesses 14, according to the plane spotters, including three huge Boeing 747-8s, the model's most costly commercial jets, which cost more than 400 million US dollars apiece. So what do you think about this? Refer to the other videos on our channel, and also never forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icons.